I think that's for real this time. You ready? Can everybody hear me? Okay. Um, thank you for coming. Uh, good afternoon. And I am Wes Brown, and this is Scott Dunlop, my partner. And we both do uh, security research as a interest. And we have previously worked in security industry as penetration testers and security assessment and application assessment and all that. Um, what is Mosquito? Um, Mosquito is a lightweight framework to deploy and run code remotely and securely in the context of penetration test. It makes a best effort to ensure that the communication is secure. Special care is taken to ensure that deployed code is not stored outside of process memory space. It protects the confidentiality and trade secrets of code that is deployed and run on the target. This could be an exploit or a methodology. From past experience with working with our proprietary zero days, um, I have hesitated to puddle jump using the exploit because I'm afraid of losing control of the exploit that somebody could be eavesdropping or somebody could be watching the file system for the exploit. And I cannot ensure that they can do file recovery on the disk but this way, we can uh, ensure that the exploit only remains in memory, the process space. At no time is the uh, exploit written to disk unless you swap. That's one case we can't really control if you force a swap. Um, I've, I had discussed the why. Um, Often it is desirable to leverage zero-day code, but doing so in an uncontrolled fashion can have re repercussions. Um, many practices have trade secret and methodology distilled in the form of audit and exploit code that they would like to keep out of a target's hand. It is a mean, also very important is uh, one problem I've had with many exploits is it transmits data and control information in the clear. I, and if I, if I transmit the control and data in the clear, I am endangering my client. I mean, using Netcat and all that is great, but you're sending your client confidential data over a, a clear text connection. So that's one problem I'm hoping to resolve. Well, here we have a technical overview. We have written proof of concept code to um, prove that this idea works. Um, the interpreter is Lua. Many of you may know Lua as an extension language for games like Wars of Warcraft. Uh, we use an asynchronous cipher called RSA, which all of you know, is used for the initial handshaking between the client and server. And uh, it's, a, it's a computationally expensive operation. So once handshaking is done, we move to a synchronous cipher called ISAC, where we trade a cipher and then the um, clone and drone communicate by the synchronous cycle. One, another, another component is entropy generation. Cryptography is worthless without good entropy, we, without a good pseudo-random number generator. Um, as, as you may have figured out, we use a console drone model. And one big plus is this code is extremely portable. We have personally tested and built on uh, Win32, OpenBSD for Intel 386, and Darwin. 
By testing on Darwin Mac OS X, we have resolved any Indian issues by order Indian issues between 32-bit, 64-bit, or risk and assist platform. Um, why did we pick Lua? It is a lightweight and powerful procedural language. It is easily extensible with bindings. We have created bindings for RSA and OpenSSL. Um, it is bytecode compiled, which is a plus when you're trying to deploy code. Um, it is highly portable. It is written in straight ENCC, and it has run on Palm Pilots without any changes. It is easy to learn. It takes about one hour to learn if you already know a procedural language. Um, moving on, we need to talk about the asynchronous cy cipher. Uh, as I've said before, the asynchronous cipher is used for initial negotiation and handshaking of a secure channel. Um, we pick RSA because it is well known in the cryptography community. While it has weaknesses, these weaknesses are known. And that is more important to us than trying out some new cipher. We, we investigated electric curve cryptography, and we, we might enable that. But RSA is a known quantity. Um, we use 4096 bit keys for uh, the handshaking, so it's very unlikely that you will crack it. Uh, for the synchronous cipher, we ran into issues when we were looking for a synchronous cipher because many of them were um, uh, had patent problems where it, and patent imp implementation or copyright problems. But we, we found one that we like and it's ISAC. It's a synchronous cipher used for console and drone communication, the actual communication itself, once the synchronous keys are exchanged. Um, a stream cipher is one byte at a time, and it's very fast and very safe. Um, and one of the nice things is we can use a large key, 192 bit, because ISAT does not penalize you for scaling the key. We could use a 16K bit key or 32K bit key and it would make no difference to computational performance. Now, uh, along with the good, we will be remiss as security researchers that we didn't talk about the bad things about our um, proof of concept and that is entropy generation. It is essential to good cryptographic security. Um, the problem is it uses OS facilities for entropy. The pseudo-random number generator in many operating systems are not very good at all. But um, on Unix machines, we use dev random. How good it is depends on a Unix derivative. OpenBSD, not surprisingly, is very good. Um, we use Windows, and Windows 2000 and XP has a very good cryptographic library. Um, and because we use the OS facility as a possible avenue of attack. We will probably investigate this in more detail. Um, uh, the cryptography library we're using, libtomcrypt, has some entropy generation functions, but they are too slow. When we tested it, it took two minutes to generate entropy. Uh, Mosquito is divided into several components. We got the core, which uh, provides the basic functionality required by Jerome and Conso. Uh, the Jerome provides a remote process that, that contacts its match console and it can execute scripts and commands that the console sends to it over the secure channel. Um, the console provides a local process that controls the deploy drone. 
one of the neat features that we uh, put in Mosquito was transport, and it's an abstracted way of uh, to connect the drone and, and the console. I'll talk about talk about that more in a bit. Um, let's talk about core. Core is really nothing more than an augmented Lua interpreter extended with the following functionality. We have RSA encryption function, ISAC encryption function, networking functions, and trophy gathering functions, and structured buffered functions. Um, the drone is the mosquito component that is deployed onto the target machine. It uh, integrates the core with drone-only functionality, meaning it's a superset of the core. Uh, it executes Lua code sent by secured uh, communication. And Lua code sent by the console is stored only in process memory. It is not stored on the disk. Uh, the console is the mosquito component that provides a local process that controls a deploy drone. Um, it integrates the core with, with console only functionality. It's a superset of the core. Um, the user uploads code to the drone by situ of communication. And even more neat is the user can also interact with the drone in real time. We can, have, we can interact with the Lua interpreter remotely. So you can do debugging and you can do code on the fly on the drone. Um, transport um, is the abstracted functionality of the console and the drone to communicate with each other. It transparently nego negotiates a communication channel between the drone and console and provides a read and write methods. And read and write are separate. Um, and it's really neat because we can do um, different transport methods for different channels. We have TTP transport, which is implemented as a default, but we have skeleton code to um, implement DNS transport, ICOMP transport, UDP transport, HT3 transport. So if you, if you could send HTTP in the path to firewall, but you can only go out by ICOMP. You can do that. You can send a message by HTTP and go out by um, ICOMP. Or you can mix and match however you want. Um, affiliation is handshaking. It's the process of identifying endpoints as valid to each other that they are who they are. They are who they are, and it sends a passphrase to each other. So unless somebody gets a hold of a drone, um, it's very hard to intercept. Um, and during the, or during the handshaking, they are changing synchronous keys for ISAC. Um, this is the outline of the flow of console affiliation. We have, um, when the console affiliation begins, it starts and it waits for the drone to contact it. And if it times out, we actually have a timeout feature because it, we don't want it to go for too long where other people may intercept the drone and modify it and then, then do whatever evil things they want to do with it. So we will have maybe a one minute timeout or a 30 second timeout. Um, and we have a drone and a secret. And the secret matches, it generates the key to send to a drone. And that's the key that a drone is going to use to send to the console. And then we got the console affiliation mode. The drone mode is a little more simple. It generates the key. It, it sends its uh, handshake to the console, and in that affiliation, it sends its key, and then it awaits the response from the console. If it times out, it poops, it's gone. 
Um, and then if the console secret is matched, then it enters operation mode where the console can send Lua commands to the drone. Um, one of the neatest things about Mosquito is the build environment. Is the virtual machine is statically linked for easy deployment in a target. It's to ensure that all libraries are needed to function are available. Um, glue is a neat Lua script. It takes the executable to a file, the stub, with the binary C code um, functions that the, the virtual machine, the interpreter, the socket library, the um, cryptographic library, and then it, it will attach the scripts in bytecode format to the end of the executable. And when the executable runs, it will go through the bytecode, and, and then you have all the functions defined in the, in the payload. So there's two ways to get code in the drone. One is to embed it in the drone, and the other is to send it over the network. So if you have library functions that you're not concerned about, you can put it in the drone itself and have them available for all penetration tests. But then you can have exploit functions used for library code. Um, now we have some ways to attack Mosquito. Um, we have um, introspective debugging. If somebody is sitting on the machine with soft ice, there's not much we can do about it. Um, we, as I've discussed, they use entropy attacks. And um, you can, you can, if you are fast enough, you can modify the drone binary itself before it's invoked. But you have to be very, very quick because the interval between uh, the drone being deployed and being invoked is very short, two, three, four seconds at most. And of course, it's always cryptography attack, like known text attacks. Um, there are some neat uses of the framework as he is. We can uh, read back to exploits into Lua for security deployment on the target. It is easily extensible if additional cryptographic methods are transformed or wanted. Um, we can do, we can write port scan code we can write SMB scan code and deploy it on the drone. So if you deploy the drone, you have all your exploit code, all your uh, functionality there. Um, we also, it will also simplify the deployment of auditing tools if you have one VM for all the platforms you attack. Um, all the dependencies are included with a drone. When we deploy a drone, we have functions that will detect the target architecture. Look in the stub library of executables. We have a Win32 executable, we have a um, Darwin executable, and then we have a um, OpenBSD executable. It will detect that, take the stub, latch on all the Lua library code you want, and on the fly, stream it to be deployed. That's one of the neat things we can use with glue, because not only is glue a script, it's also a library function in Mosquito. Um, we have some future ideas that we can use. One of the neatest ideas would be an integral high speed packet sniffer and generation in the drone. That would be great for, great for port scanning or listening to traffic and interpreting the traffic. Uh, one thing that we wanted to do but weren't able to do yet was drone to drone relay. You got the console, you got the drone, and then you got another drone. And the communication is relayed through the drones as many times as you want. But at no time does any of the drones in between know what's happening at the endpoint drone because we got nested encryption. 
when you when you got the endpoint drone sending a it's got its own key that only the console knows it's passed and encrypted again and passed and encrypted again. Remember, ISAC has no penalty. So you can nest it as many times as you want. Um, and we would like to do further refinement of the automated configuration and drone console pairs and consoles that can um, manage multiple drones. Right now we can only manage one drone. Um, who are we? Got work for us? I'm Wes Brown and I'm a security consultant and security researcher and Scott Dunlop is a software engineer and security researcher. Uh, he's more of a software engineer while I'm more of a consultant type. Uh, we are available and actively seeking work. Wes is particularly interested in me and full-time employment as a security researcher. Um, we have a website, fmosecurity.com, worldwideweb.fmosecurity.com, if you want more information. Got any questions? Um, as of tomorrow, we will be putting the um, the entire framework code on SourceForge. It is under the BSD license. Feel free to do whatever you want with it. And that's it. Ah. Uh, Scott will be taking the questions because I'm deaf and I can't hear the audience. We didn't bring in binoculars so we could lip read. Yes. Uh, the 0 0.2 footprint was about 160K. We hadn't done any optimizations with uh, any of the C compiler flags. Uh, we were hoping to target for about 80 to 90K. Uh, we've been encountering some problems with the fact that we have to bundle most of our dependencies uh, with the actual drone. Uh, we're not making any assumptions about availability of things. We're just assuming uh, standard C a lot. Uh, in the case of Win32, you know, the, the standard DLLs. Um, the current 0 0.3 is a little bit heftier because we put in live TomCrypt and uh, a lot of the Tom is very easy to strip down. Uh, we just haven't had a chance to do it. Sure. Uh, we we are uh, supplying a general purpose uh, socket library called Lua Socket. Uh, it's not quite performing up the standard that we'd like, but the, the goal was to uh, provide the ability to do further uh, network penetration and auditing from the drone. Uh, very often in audit, you have a situation where you've managed to breach a uh, edge system and you need to get deeper in now that you're past the firewall and to see where you can go once you've gotten into the bastion. Um, and that was kind of the purpose of the drone. Yes. Uh, we certainly kicked around the idea of abusing some of the uh, the uh, DRM APIs in Windows XP. Unfortunately, most Unixes don't provide these. Um, OpenBSD does provide some functionality for preventing uh, writing into swap space, uh, but that is one of our ma more major vulnerabilities: is the possibility of uh, later analysis of the swap file. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't have a console running on Win32. I haven't linked one. <laughs> uh, get the Max, but uh, they're not uh, cooperating with the projector today. <laughs> it's very embarrassing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. We are relying on uh, Live TomCrypt, which is fairly simple and is configurable and can be stripped down. And of course, uh, Lua, as you mentioned. Uh, 
And our only other major dependencies have been just Lua extensions. Uh, the stuff that we've added in, uh, the structured buffer and everything else are actually pretty simple. Um, if there are buffer overfunds and if there are buffer overfunds in Lua, that is a problem. However, uh, the way the construction works, um, once the drone has been deployed, uh, there's a fixed uh, window which is configurable of how long the drone has to contact the console. Uh, the first one to contact and correctly uh, complete affiliation within that window uh, basically gets the connection. After that, uh, we drop the listen socket and basically we just run with that one transport until it dies. So uh, buffer overrun uh, exposure is pretty minimal. Uh, as you mentioned, there's always the possibility of someone trying to respond before the affiliation goes through. But unless there's some kind of yeah, very specialized um, IDS. I, I don't see that happening. Yeah, um, we were investigating um, how to deploy this by shell code, and if we can do this, then we would have no drone in the file system at all to intercept. It would be in the process memory of whatever uh, program we buffer over in. Any other questions? We got a cover for a time not having a demo. Well, you're always free to email the questions to that address over there. And of course the um the the, the code itself will be available for your inspection tomorrow and source forge. We will deploy it to source forge. Uh, well, once you put something on SourceForge, barring uh, intervention by lawyers, uh, it's there pretty much permanently. Uh, matter of fact, their policies are pretty uh, strict about not taking something back out of the public domain once you put it there. So once it's there, it's there. Yes. Uh, it really depends on public interest. Uh, I don't have an active use for Mosquito. Uh, Wes does. Uh, it was basically my uh, entertainment here was just getting it out in the open and just basically I wanted to see what everybody thought of the idea uh, and the actual algorithm. Mm -hmm. uh, Wes, of course, considers it a more uh, usable tool because it's more in his line. At all, <laughs> I guess. Thank you for the loan for the laptop. Yeah. Thank you for the patience.